So first of all, I want to say it is, as I've said, a very common condition. So about one in eight women um, may be affected at some point they get that diagnosis in their lives. So very, very common, or one in eight, or they say up to 13% of, of women have that diagnosis. And what we look for, so it's three things called the Rotterdam criteria. So the first thing that we would ask about would be your cycles and how regular your cycles are. So um, very irregular cycles, often very fast space cycles, sometimes cycles that are, are closely spaced, so increase in bleeding, but usually it presents with very uh, very long cycles. So this suggests that maybe a, a patient or a lady is not ovulating consistently each month. So that's the, the one thing that we, that we look for. It's important to note that if we try and make this diagnosis in teenagers, it's not necessarily going to be accurate. So the guidelines suggest that this is a diagnosis we can only make when a person has been menstruating for about eight years. So they kind of mature um, from that point of view, uh, from a puberty point of view, and uh, their cycles are more consistent and, and we can kind of rely on what we're seeing. Okay. The second thing that we look at would be signs of high testosterone levels. So testosterone is a hormone that we normally associate with men or finding in men, um, but women can present with these signs uh, or symptoms. So a patient may complain of very oily skin or very, very severe acne, very oily hair. So, so those are some things that may indicate um, these high androgen or testosterone levels. The other thing that would be more obvious would be abnormal growth of hair on the face or the chest, on the back. So again, it can be a little bit iffy because culturally some people are more hairy than others. So we're talking about a new onset that kind of develops around the same time as puberty uh, that a person would struggle with. Okay. And then either we can make that diagnosis clinically. So after what you tell us about the signs and symptoms of high testosterone levels, or we can make that diagnosis on a blood test. So there are blood tests we would we would do, um, and testosterone is one of them, in order to assist us with that. If that is raised, it kind of helps us to confirm that diagnosis. And then the last thing that we look for would be this idea of many, many little follicles on the ovaries. So the name itself, polycystic ovarian syndrome, can be a little bit misleading because it sounds like we're looking for these big cysts on the ovaries. Uh, but in fact, what it is is very small little uh, what we call antral follicles or immature eggs that are in the ovaries and there are many of these so more than kind of usual what we would expect so again if we're looking at guidelines specifically they suggest if we can count more than 20 um, in, in one of the ovaries that this would fulfill our diagnosis yeah.